Almost every charity in the world holds fundraisers in Beverly Hills. Over the past 34 years, the Thalians, led by Debbie Reynolds, have raised so much money, they've built this wing of the Cedar sinai Hospital. Another local group is Cher. It seems every star in town has pitched in to help the ladies of Cher, who to date have raised over $18 million for various charities. But tonight, the city is honoring a man who has raised more money for more charities all over the world than anyone else. His name is Frank Sinatra. This year, they honored him with the 30th annual Will Rogers Award at the Beverly Hills Hotel. The stars arrived at 7.30. There was the usual photo opportunity and a chance for friends to get together and talk. And then he had one of the most memorable evenings the town has ever enjoyed. A lot of laughs and a lot of love. In uh, Nancy uh, Sinatra's book, she describes her father as Don Quixote in a tuxedo, <laughs> a blend of uh, toughness and tenderness, a model of consistency as an artist, as a man not without his contradictions, and a fellow who treats the room to caviar and champagne and himself to a hot dog and a beer. <laughs> Nancy says that defining her father is like trying to define electricity. Others say upsetting her father is like sitting on electricity. <laughs> no one could ever estimate how many people may have been conceived to the sounds of Frank Sinatra's records. But uh, looking, looking around the room tonight, I would estimate that at least half of you wouldn't have been born if your parents had been fans of Snooky Lanson. The media, oddly enough, seems to enjoy writing about Frank, but they often overlook some of his most important accomplishments. To begin with, the statistics are mind-boggling. More than 60 movies, 100 albums, thousands of songs. But what most people don't know is that he has been personally responsible for raising more than one billion dollars for charities all over the world. A billion, that's what it'd be. A song is really a four minute play and it has to be interpreted and I don't think there's any other living singer in our time that does that better than Frank. We of the SLAA, Sinatra Leading Lady Alumnae Association, <laughs> all agree that when you're shooting your close-up and you look right into those baby blue eyes, you finally realize what he meant when he said, ring-a-ding-a-ding. -ding. <laughs> Here's to you, Frank. Scooby-dooby-doo, baby. Frank and I, I don't know whether you remember, but we worked together in London a long time ago on a film called The Road to Hong Kong. Anyway, Frank called me a few days later and he asked me to dinner and I said, Fine, that would be nice. I'd quite like to go to dinner with you. What time will you pick me up? And he said, 8 o'clock. My plane will be at London Airport. Your plane? I said, well, it's very nice. It's really nice of you to ask me to dinner, but I'm in London, and unfortunately, I have a 6 a.m. call, so I, I won't be able to fly with you tomorrow. 
Now, I've always regretted that we didn't make that dinner date, Frank, but better late than never. So my private number is 1-800-555-2866. Operators are standing by to take your call. I hope you understand, Barbara. Here's to you, Frank. God bless. Congratulations, Frank. And I, well, I, I've got to be honest with you. They, when I called the midnight escort service that I work for, <laughs> they said that maybe it could be a career move. So I said, well, Frank's always been nice to me, but I mean, I, I didn't know I was gonna be invited, so maybe I could just, you know, ask him for one request. Now, I know you get tired of requests, Frank, right? How would you feel if I just did my Julio Iglesias impression? <laughs> to all the girls I love before <laughs> were traveling and all my door. I'm glad they came along. I dedicate this song to all the girls I loved before. <laughs> Frank, I know there's some nights you'd like to be a Barbara in Palm Springs, and you know, maybe there's a date. So if you don't want to go in for the evening, call me up. I got a tux, I got a tan, I can be there in 10 minutes, and God knows I love you. I make jokes about you, Frank, because I'm a friend. You're now in your 70s, and it's over. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Is he laughing or coming towards me? <laughs> really, but you're... You've been since we've known each other. I'll never forget in Zardy's Jazz then, when you came in with Peggy Lee, before Barbara, and you said to me, Peggy Lee, this is Don Rickles, and Peggy Lee, in her beautiful words, said... <laughs> And like a moron, I thought it was an album. <laughs> but to you, Frank, God bless you. As you look at me now, you're starting to remember who you are. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to say the two most exciting words in show business. Frank Sinatra. to you because you won't. I can't. <laughs> it's the Will, Roger, Will Rogers Memorial Award presented to Frank Sinatra for outstanding contributions to the world of entertainment and for achievements which reflect devotion to his craft and fellow workers. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. That'll fill the hole where the radio speaker used to be. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. But in a serious vein, I am delighted and thrilled and happy and honored, deeply honored, that I was chosen for this award tonight by my, my fellow workers and friends and neighbors and all of you good people whom I know for years and years, and whom I will know for the coming years, because I plan to be around for a while. <laughs> I've come a long way from a skinny kid standing in front of a New Jersey street corner playing a ukulele and singing songs. Now it's nice that the efforts of people like yourselves, that other skinny kids get a chance to do the same thing that, that I did in my life. Will Rogers once said he never met a man he didn't like. Of course, Will Rogers never met Dan Rather. <laughs> I don't know.
don't know why I said that. I just thought it was kind of fun. Another great man once said, if you want to be seen, stand up. And if you want to be heard, speak up. If you want to be loved, shut up and sit down. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Frank Sinatra, Jr. Shortly before his death in 1937, George Gershwin was trying to come up with some way to solve a problem that seems to be part of our society. It always seems to be difficult for one man to express love for another. Of course, I have a little impunity, I think, being a relative. Speaking on behalf of my sisters and I, we want to give to you the salutation the way Ira Gershwin had it at the time, and I think it's very appropriate, by the way. This is for you, Dad. It's very clear our love is here to stay. Not for a year, but ever and a day. The radio and the telephone and the movies that we know may just be passing fancies and in time will go. But oh my dear, our love is here to stay. Together we're going a long, long way. In time, the Rockies will crumble. Gibraltar may tumble, but they're only made of clay. But our love is here to stay. Congratulations, Dad. We love you.